Hey, welcome to Five Star Guns and Gears, and today we are talking moderators and catastrophic failures. So let's go ahead, get right into it, and we'll get started with uh, some of my opinions and things that maybe you want to watch for if you're looking at getting a moderator for your air gun. So uh, if anybody on YouTube is watching, uh, any of the uh, staff there, these are not firearm silencers. These are air gun moderators. Uh, and we are not working on these. We are not assembling these. Um, this is for informational purposes. However, we are gonna talk about some uh, characteristics of each of these. So, All right, let's get started, guys. With that out of the way, because YouTube likes to uh, demonetize. So uh, one of the uh, first moderators uh, purchased uh, from an individual recently was uh, for my Benjamin Aquila and I was pretty intrigued you know what was available for the Benjamin Aquila when I purchased that PCP so <clears throat> looked online had a lot of reviews about Buckrail and Buckrail makes a lot of 3d printed moderators and stuff and uh, for the most part they've got good reviews there's some negative reviews and there's some stuff online you can go check them out but i thought you know hey i give them a chance because 3d printed stuff uh, gets a bad rap and it's not all bad uh, now it's hard to maintain a good quality control unless you have industrial 3d printers uh, but most of your home 3d printers even like i've got a prusa uh, mark 3s plus that's probably the gold standard uh, for I would say 3D printers that are serious into 3D printing without getting into a commercial grade printer. Uh, so I ordered this Buckrail Aquila moderator and pretty cool. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, uh, I got a refund, so I'm not complaining about money or anything like that because one, this was super cheap. It's like 20 something dollars very inexpensive what could you expect for 20 something bucks uh, for a piece of plastic anyway um, so very reasonable price but the first one I got ordered in it was pellet clipping and I was getting erratic uh, groups and stuff very erratic groups I mean like pie plate at 25 yards and I knew that gun shot better than that without the moderator I put the moderator on groups would go to crap take it off they tighten back up to you know, probably quarter inch, maybe a little bit bigger at 25 yards. Pretty good groups, not bad. Anyway, uh, so I got to looking at everything and contact them because I didn't notice anything internal apparent with pellet clipping. But the customer support said, we're pretty sure it's pellet clipping. Let us send you another one. So, cool. They sent me another one. Same thing, it was pellet clipping. Now that one I knew was pellet clipping because if you look inside, you can see nicks on the baffle. So it was more apparent. Uh, I would have uh, hoped that the second one I got would have resolved that issue, but it did not. So I reached back out to him and I just want to let them know. I didn't care about a refund or anything. Didn't even ask them for a refund. Just said, hey, look, this one's definitely pellet clipping. Um, you can see it inside. Uh, there's little chucks missing off the baffle, um, so it's definitely pellet clipping. We're having the same issue. Matter of fact, the groups even got more erratic. So uh, they went ahead and said, we're sending you another one, but we're refunding your money. I, didn't, I told them, you don't have to send me another one if you don't want. No, we, we want to get you another one out, but we are going to refund your money. And I appreciate them doing that. Um, so I got this one in and actually did a video on this and actually very excited because it was not pellet clipping and my groups actually in my opinion got better with running the moderator so very uh excited to be running the buck row moderator fast forward i've got about 250 rounds through that gun with this moderator moderator's on tight it is still not pellet clipping but we have a catastrophic failure that is the end cap, which is 3D printed, of course, as a one-piece unit. 
and you can see it had a layer adhesion separation and I'm pretty sure what it's from is we're running at pretty high pressures for these air guns is it just was a weak point on that layer and it, it just finally separated and blew it clean off. There's no baffle strikes on the inside. There, if you look inside, there's no baffle strikes. So there's absolutely no baffle strikes. I could actually screw this in and probably shoot it. It just won't have the end cap. Uh, and it'd probably be fine. It actually probably has to be pretty darn quiet with it. Uh, but I did not like that uh, being like that. So I went ahead and took it off again. And, and no, I have not wrote them. Uh, they refunded my money. They already sent me. This is the third one. I do not expect another one. Uh, but I do believe you get what you pay for. And when you pay 20 something bucks, you're not going to get the quality control as you would a precision machined moderator. So this is a good example of that. Uh, even though you can look at it and it looked fine and everything, I've printed tons of 3D things, and I guarantee you, you can have a layer adhesion issue or a layer shift even. And a layer shift, what it is, is one of your layers or a couple of your layers shift over and it continues to print. And it's just, you know, a couple thousands out of line. And when you're talking about precision stuff that needs to be fairly high tolerances, you know, a small shift or even a large shift could cause issues. Uh, like this wasn't a layer shift. I think it was just a layer separation. I might could even glue this back on would be a potential. But at this point, I'll probably never put this back on my gun. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, the metal route. And let me show you some of the other designs. And I'm gonna show you right now that not only does 3D printed ones fail, you can have failures with other ones as well. So we're talking about a $20 moderator. Now let's step up to a $239 moderator. Put this on my FX Impact and it was having worse shot eradication than this was, where this was a pie plate. This wasn't hitting the backstop of the target. This was about shooting anywhere from two to three foot off the target, uh, off my center point of aim. And uh, after I ruled out scope issues, uh, and called Utah Air Gun, they said, make sure it's not baffle striking. And so I looked in, I didn't see anything offhand initially when I looked this way, uh, but when I flipped it around, it appeared that there was a little issue. And I got a video on this more in depth. Uh, and this is a Huguet uh, Magna. Very, very nice, well machined. But something in here, whether it is, I don't see any baffles that are struck in here, but at some point between here and the end cap, we do have an end cap strike, major end cap strike. So that just shows you even with your uh, brand names, you can't have issues. Uh, this was more of a issue, not with alignment and having strikes because it didn't strike. This was, it did on the first two they sent me. Uh, however, but on this one was a layer adhesion issue. And after three failures with them, you know, I will not be buying a buck rail uh, because I do not think the quality is good enough to run on these high pressure air rifles. I think if you was trying to quieten down a pump or something like that, uh, you'd probably be fine with their products, but I would highly discourage if you're running any PCP, do not use one of their uh, moderators just because of the back pressure and everything is gonna be a lot greater than a pump action and stuff like that. Um, in most cases so really would discourage that uh, even though I had high hopes for it had high hopes for this too but it's have it's going back to Utah air uh, don't know what I'm gonna do but set that to the side so let me show you uh, these two right here this is actually I think a 40 something dollar moderator it came from uh, air gun fun .ca, uh, and they're in Canada. Now this adapter does not come with it. This is adapter I bought separate. But this has been a pretty good moderator. Now this is on my Artemis M16A is what I run this on. 
Uh, M16A is a PCP raffle. So, uh, again, this is an air rifle moderator. This is not a silencer. And I'll show you how this is built. It's got a O-ring in here and got a coned end cap. And I've had zero issues out of this. Take this out. And it just has a entire stack of cone-shaped baffles. And let's see, there's eight of them plus a spacer baffle. And then your hollow tube. All aluminum made, very good, very good quality, especially for the price. And it actually quietens down that Artemis significantly. Very, very happy with this purchase. Uh, it's what it was available. Uh, Wes over there, airgunfun.ca. Uh, that's what he recommends and sells with the Artemis uh, air rifles. So that's what I ordered when I ordered the gun from him. And uh, and yes, I did order a gun for Canada. Had it shipped in, guys. If you've never ordered a gun from out of the U.S. Go check out Wes, great guy, easy to work with, and he got my product here extremely fast. Uh, now the uh, moderators are shipped through the US, uh, through I guess one of his warehouses here. So uh, real good, real good design. I'm gonna take a look and see if I can find an adapter. Uh, and I think Donnie FL has one that will adapt to the uh, Aquila. And I'll probably just run probably this one right here. So that is a very good basic design moderator that works really well. And you can see the difference in the size too. This freaking magnet is a freaking beast. So uh, something in between. Now height is almost the same. I really don't count this area nor this adapter. But it is bigger round. Uh, however, look at the magna swallows this it would eat it for lunch um, this is a factory fx impact moderator this is what comes with your uh, fx impact m3s and all they are i'm gonna tell you right now i'm gonna ruin it for a lot of you guys because i didn't know but i found out um, they come as a empty tube again this is not a fire moderator this is a uh, moderator for an air gun a pcp air rifle now this what is different this comes as a hollow tube is i resin printed a baffle stack and i do have felt wrap on the outside of it and these three uh, contact points are absolute solid on the inside of this so there is no shift and the baffles stay perfectly true perfectly centered regardless of it having the felt the felt's not keeping it centered these little nubs that i have are what's keeping this centered uh, works absolutely like a champ on the fx impact 30 cal uh, quietens it down significantly however uh Working on getting another moderator in here for the run on this gun. But for now, to get me by, this is working. Uh, probably not the quietest solution, uh, but it's better than no moderator at all. So uh, that's what they'll send you. They'll send you this, the end caps come off, and it's going to be a hollow tube, no baffles. That's what you're going to get with the FX Impact. So uh, you can get other uh, non EFLs that you can order with the FX Impact. I don't know when you upgrade if they go ahead and put baffles in it. I don't know. Uh, haven't researched it enough. Uh, I wasn't planning on using this at all anyway. And my ultimate goal is probably keep this on the Artemis M16, put this one eventually on the Aquila with an adapter. I think this would be perfect for the Aquila. And uh, then I gotta figure out what I'm gonna replace this with. And I've got a pretty good idea. Uh, working with Huma right now, and hopefully uh, they'll send me a moderator to run on this gun. Uh, plus, I've heard nothing but good about their their moderator, so I think I'd be better off anyway. Anyway, guys, I just kind of wanted to show you what catastrophic failures you can encounter. Uh, you can encounter in cap strikes. You can encounter baffle strikes, and I think what leads up to that is. Uh, especially when these are made in mass production and stuff, I think things can get off center just a hair. 
uh, it could be user error too, I guess if you didn't have the screwed on properly, but this was 100% tight like it's supposed to be. Um, again, this is a good uh, reference as well. The first two that I got had baffle strikes internal. Didn't have any uh, baffle strikes on the outside, but you could actually see damage on the outside cap on the others, which I could say the other two, when it got struck by a pellet, this piece didn't fall off. Uh, this one went flying off after I shot it just recently. And uh, my son was over, always doing a little target practicing and stuff. And I honestly thought the pellet hit it, but there was, it's absolutely perfect inside and out. There's no strikes. There's nothing at all on the edges. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It, it was a layer adhesion failure right there. So uh, if you buy stuff that is made out of plastic, be wary. Uh, if you're running on PCP, I'd say do not do it. Step up to something that is a machined out of metal moderator. I think you're going to be a lot safer bet, especially running anything with high pressure air. And I think you'll be better off. So this was my experience with some of my moderators. Again, uh, YouTube, these are not silencers. These are air gun moderators. Here you go, right here. Air gun use only. So, uh, gotta keep you, YouTube happy, guys. Uh, other than that, guys, leave some comments down below if you got any suggestions on moderators, if you've uh, had any experiences with baffle sprites, if you've had any experience with baffle strikes, catastrophic failures like this, I would consider that a catastrophic failure. Uh, anything that you may have experienced dealing with moderators on your PCP, I'd love to hear it down below. I'll comment back to you, I promise you. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever, uh, just leave it down below, let me know. Uh, I do really believe that Machine moderators are your best bet for PCP air rifles and stay away from anything 3D printed. Even if it's uh, like I'm running a resin stack on here, that's a little different. It's encapsulated in metal. Uh, I don't mind all this 3D printing and this is filament based printing. It's not resin. Uh, I think he uses ABS on this, which is pretty strong. Uh, however, it did have a layer adhesion. Uh, I don't mind that being on the internals because you're not dealing with gunpowders, you're dealing with air. And I think if the baffles are the right thickness and they are mach they are uh, printed properly and everything's centered, I don't think you're going to have an issue. My issue is layered adhesion on things that's pressure and where your pressure is going to be is blowing towards that end cap. Everything coming this way, air pressure wise, and that end cap is your last little stop right there. And you can see right there, that's what happened here, is the air pressure blew this thing apart. Not a good thing. I'm not saying it couldn't happen on something like this. It's highly unlikely. You're not using these on firearms. Now, firearms where you're talking 10, 20 times the pressure of air guns, maybe higher, depending on what you're shooting. It On lightweight aluminum, it could, it could shred these too. It probably could tear them up. But an air gun, you're probably never going to have a problem with this. So I would stick to metal based moderators and like I say even though you have a metal based moderator there can be things uh, in the QC uh, when you know I'm sure these are visually inspected but somewhere the quality on this one something happened and it's a brand spanking new moderator uh, something happened and it's allowing those pellets to hit and when I screw this one on they're not hitting so we know it's not the gun so it, it is something to do with this right here. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. I want to just discuss moderators, catastrophic failures, and my overall opinion on them. Take it for what you will. Like them, hate them. Like uh, these uh, moderators uh, or not, uh, that's your opinion. If you've had good luck with them, that's fine. I've had nothing but absolute bad luck with them. Uh, like I say, the first two was pellet strike issues. The last one is uh, layer separation. So uh, I would not put this on my air gun at all. I don't care if it's a $200 PCP or $2,000 PCP. This 
uh, would not be one I recommend. Uh, stick to one of these. Like I say, you can even get lower end moderators that like this one was 40, 45 bucks. You're not spending too much more and you're not spending 10 times as much like on this one. And this is a good example. I've never had a problem with this one, 40 bucks. I'm not saying it moderates as good as this one, but I have had a problem out of this brand new just now and it's 240 bucks. So, uh, is it worth spending this? Is it worth spending 10 times as much? Uh, it's up to you. Or can you find something in between somewhere? You know, not maybe not even 40. Step up a grade, get you a Donnie FL that's around 120 or so. I think Donnie FL probably makes these for FX. Uh, maybe that's the route you go. But I think overall you're going to be happier to get a better built moderator. Even if you got a Huguet, I'm not saying there's are are bad. This is a bad moderator. This moderator not necessarily all their moderators because if you look online there's several good uh, reviews and stuff on them uh, so I, I believe this was a qc issue out of their factory uh, i don't know if they was going to be able to catch it or not but i wish they would have uh, could have saved me some headaches uh, but it is what it is but that shows you you can spend a lot of money or a little money and still have issues and this is a good prime example here. So hopefully, guys, you learned something today. Hopefully, I haven't confused you too much. Hopefully, y'all understand baffle strike, in cap strikes, uh, catastrophic failures with layer adhesion when it comes to something that is not built. Uh, stuff like this really is not designed to be used in the way we're using it with pressures. Uh, even when you use the ABS filament, it's not. Um, Will it handle it? Yeah, it will. And like this did for a while, and then it didn't. So all of a sudden it quit, and it gave up the ghost and decided it was going to separate. I don't know how long it uh, was like that, but it finally did separate. Everyone, if you're subscribed, thank you very much. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up if you would. It doesn't cost a dime. It really helps us out on the channel. And helps me put out more content certainly appreciate it hit that bell notification that way you know when i'm putting out new content and as always god bless and i'll catch y'all on the next episode